At today's video, we'll show how I lowered the forks on one of my ninjas, actually more than one of the ninjas, and some tips because it's pretty similar for all motorcycles. Now, today's shop project, I'm going to do something that I've done to several of the other bikes with, with good success. I'm going to try to share how and why I do it. And this bike is our next bike that we're going to try to lower the forks a small amount. And I'll explain why I do it, how to do it. In fact, we'll do it in real time. And what some of the benefits might or might not be. And if it's something that's appropriate for you. But the biggest thing that, to keep in mind is if you choose to do this, or you choose to try it for yourself on your bike, and I'll try to share the do's and don'ts that I've run into. The most important thing to remember is you can always put it right back in a matter of less than an hour. So I wanted to start out the information because we're trying to share information. If you go to any motorcycle dealer, you'll notice some motorcycles come from the factory lowered, or they have an adjustability factor. Now, an R1 has an adjustability factor. You can just loosen the bolts, slide the forks up and down any amount. The amount that you are limited by is if it's going to, the tire or the fender or the brake lines are going to run into some kind of an interference fit. So the first thing I would suggest anybody considering doing this is do it a small amount. And a half inch is a good place to start, three quarters of an inch. And, and of course, what I, goes without saying, lower them both the same amount. Now on the MT-09, when I originally did this, and I want to thank Bob who gave me this idea. He had lowered his Honda, 900 Honda, and with good results. And I, I went all the way. And now there's, a, there's machining on the forks themselves that tell you where Yamaha thinks that's the amount you can lower it, the maximum amount. But I would suggest if you're new to this, maybe you only want to go half of the amount. But look to see that you have the the amount of the diameter changes as you get up here you really can't see it on video but it, it, it has like a coke bottle shape and I assume that's what they're trying to tell you is don't lower it any more than that or you might potentially have an interference fit so the first ninja I did I went all the way I said hey this is working out great and what happened is it served two purposes to me this bike I have adjustable handlebars on and I had put them higher lower higher lower but I never really found a spot I was comfortable with until I had made the spacers and I have adjustable spacers but what this did it lowers the front of the bike just enough that you feel like the bars are a little bit lower and the bike feels a little more aggressive to ride now since it's a sport bike mm, that's that's probably something that getting more weight over the front wheel mm, again if you track day these are things and I'm sure there are people that have counterpoints to this please I know there's counterpoints to everything but I'm only trying to show what worked for me. And if you ride a lot faster than I do, and you can check my channel for how I ride and where I ride, and if you ride a lot faster than that, you probably should be making a video too. So this is our FCR, and when I did the 900 hour restoration, I was debating whether I should, it looks like Yamaha is probably thinking, yeah, you could lower that a lot. Well, I made lowering links for this bike, lowered the back, and the next time, I, know I haven't been riding this bike a lot because I have brand new bikes. And so what I think the next thing is when we start riding this bike again, probably soon, I'm going to try lowering that a little bit, a little bit more. But it looks like Yamaha already is trying to tell you that's as low as you should go. Now, keep in mind, originally this bike had clip-ons, and that may be a recess for the clip-ons. But it's also the diameter that this clamp allows that to tighten up on. So you wouldn't want to, as an example, try to force it over this. You'd want to stay in that range. And I think a lot of this is just common sense. But it's a good idea to start with. So a few years back, we did the restoration, and all the videos are on the channel. This bike, I haven't lowered it. It's never been lowered. But it, it again, because it's a, a bike that I ride all the time, I've been waiting for a day like today to do it. And the good news is, it looks like it's going to be a relatively straightforward job. We'll do it in real time. But this is a bike that has had the same handlebars since the day it was brand new. It's a one-owner bike. And what, what I'm hoping is going to happen, it's going to have a little more aggressive, a little more weight on the front wheel, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit less prone to have the front wheel light on the hard acceleration. Now, because this bike has air forks, I haven't figured out if this is even a practical thing to do, but boy, I would love to lower that 
find out if anybody out there has lowered a GS and kept the air forks because the suspension is really good on this bike. It's 39 year old suspension and it's a one owner and it's really glass smooth and it's got a lot of it's got over 73,000 miles on it now. But I would love to be able to lower that a little bit. Now, some people, the object of doing this, some people just find as you get older and older, the seat height gets harder and harder to get on the bike, or you're short, or you have a short inseam. I know Ray Straub is one that always would like to have the bike a little bit lower. Well, we've put lower and links on Luciano's bike, Chris's bike, my bike. Several of the people that hang out with us with the BMWs have lower and links. But the whole idea is to make the bike comfortable for the person that's going to ride it. Now, one of the total surprises for me was when I bought the, the MT-09, of course, I got it for my birthday last year. It's got over 8,000 miles on it now. One of the things that I really liked, it was very, very comfortable for me. I had all the suspension settings on soft, and uh, the seat just about fit me. The handlebars were perfect. I loved everything about it. As time has gone by, I've firmed up the suspension a little bit, gone to a little bit more air in the tires, and when I lowered the front end, that was just the amount I needed to make the bike a little less wheelie prone. And as you lower the front end, of course, you're putting more and more weight on the front wheel. You're making the bike, the ergonomics different. It'll, it'll always have the feel that, well, it'll be the equivalent of lowering the handlebars. The amount you lower the forks, in reality, you're lowering the handlebars too. So it's something you can custom tailor to your own needs, your own body type, riding type, style. And the good news is... Unlike a lot of things in the world of motorcycles, if you don't like, first of all, it doesn't cost a penny to do it, especially if you have your own lift. It's a good idea if you have a friend, but you can do it by yourself too. And if you don't like it, the biggest selling feature of all, you loosen the bolts and undo it. So let's get started. So to do the job right, you need to come along or you need a jack or you need, it's good to have a friend to do this. I have a manual one that's about $20. I have the Harbor Freight electric one that was about $75. I think we'll just move the bikes around, get the bike in position under the electric lift. This will make it a piece of cake. Now anybody with a small bike collection and an even smaller garage knows you're always out of space and the bike you want to work on <laughs> is always in the back, so we got to move some bikes around. So keep in mind, I almost always work alone in my shop and I try to do all of the things as if you didn't have a helper. Having a helper can be a big help right now. But I always want to start the project by getting the bike stable and upright. I don't want it flip flopping around. I don't want the kickstand to go up. Especially on a job like this. And having a come along makes it easy. Now you could do it a lot of other ways with a car jack and with two big strong friends. Uh, one of which is not me. But this worked several times in the past perfectly. We're going to try to show this in real time how we do it today. Now we only need to raise the bike so the front wheel is off the ground. We've taken the weight off the wheel. We can turn it. That's as high as we have to go. A couple of good tips. A lot of times you have to put the, the straps in here. But no matter where you put them, be real careful you don't pinch wires or cables or whatever. In this case, what I do is I just put a knot in a strap to make it smaller. Use the hand grips. That's always a good thing. And I like to have the bike as solid as possible while I'm working on it. So there are six bolts that have to get loosened. There's two down there. We have to get those maybe from the bottom. Once those six bolts are loosened just enough, we're going to lower the bike. And if, when the front touches the ground, it's going to gently push that up little by little by little. Usually that works without a problem. If there is a problem, I'll try to grab the fork tube and loosen it up if it's oxidized. Now this bike is 12 years old, so it could be we have some oxidation in there. We're going to find out. Now I just got these from Harbor Freight, these Allens that adapt into half inch drives. And they'll be very, they'll be very handy to have today. Now on this bike, that big socket doesn't fit down there conveniently, so we have to use an ordinary Allen wrench to do this. And the reason you don't want the bike six inches up in the air, because when you loosen these, the forks are going to drop. I want the bike just almost touching the front wheel. I don't want it turning any more than that. Bolts are usually pretty tight too, and I'm sure they're Loctite from the factory, since this is one of the... 
Now I can tell the bolts are loose enough once I see the forks drop. Now that's the reason I wouldn't want to have the bike an inch off the ground or the forks are going to just drop right down. But once that moves, I know this side's loose enough, I can loosen the other side. It should drop an equal amount and then we'll lower the bike down. Now, as soon as I loosen the last bolt, the forks slide right up. I lowered it one notch and now I can just take, I let the come along down is what I meant to say, let it down one notch at a time until I have the dimension I want to lower it. Okay, so everything's loose. Every time I lower this a little bit, the tubes are going to come up. It looks like they're coming up equally. And I want to, I want to see how much I realistically, there we go. I noticed they have scribe marks on here, so possibly this set of forks fits other models and they leave that exposed, but I'm going to start with the maximum amount, then put the bike out on back on its feet and see if I have any interference issues, if I have no interference issues. But then the thing is, I can always go back to half of the amount. I can always go back to this amount. This is fully adjustable in a very short amount of time with almost no effort and zero money. It's an adjustable feature every bike has. All right, next step is to tight, re-tighten all the bolts up and then we have to take the bike off the stands and the strap and see if we have any interference issues at this height. Okay, all the bolts are tight. We need to take the strap off, take it off the stand and check for interference. Okay, now with all the bolts tightened up, and I just double checked by tightening the handlebar bolts even, anytime you have the strap on them, it's a good idea to do it. Everything's torqued down. Now, if I'm going to have an interference fit, I've got to kind of work this. Now, I can see right through the fairing. Let me put the side stand up, in fact. Oh, I got plenty of clearance that way. Nothing's even close. Now, what this is going to do. The first time I get to ride the bike, and it won't be today, of course, the first time I ride the bike, it'll be much quicker on turning. From going straight to initiating a turn, it turns in quicker. It's the exact opposite of a chopper. With the front ends far out, everything stays, <laughs> you can't turn the bike. As you put it lower the forks, the bike gets quicker and quicker to turn. Now, for the where I ride and how I ride, and you could be the judge of the quality of my riding, is thousands of videos out there of me riding. This suits my needs. Now, if I were doing track day, this bike has done track days at Pocono. It tops out at about 125 on a straightaway. I don't know at 125 if this would, you'd even know the difference. Maybe somebody smarter than me would figure that out. But I don't go 125 where I ride. So I'm adapting the bike to my riding style, how I ride, where I ride. You can watch the video, decide for yourself. Maybe that's how you ride too. So before I end the video, I wanted to share this. This is Colonite Insulator Wax. We did a product review on this a while back. I want to show something that I think, that, and this works well for me. I have a clean microfiber. I take a little bit of this wax and you don't need a lot. This is really good quality stuff. Now, where it's really handy, of course it waxes the bike beautifully, but if every once in a while you do just what I'm doing right now, put a coat on the back wheel, what it does, it makes getting all of the schmutz and the grease and the, everything off of that wheel so easy. And this is really not what this wax is made for. I know it's made to do like show cars and then it's really not a polish, it's a wax, it's a protectant. But what it does on a job like the back wheel, it is extremely good at putting a coat of wax on it. When you go to clean the wheel, this stuff just floats right off. It's amazing. Now, I always let it sit a minute. It, it goes on, it goes off so easy, and thank you Joe Padula. Before I end the video, this is a guy, I want to give him a shout out. This is some good stuff. And as I always do, I log in anything I do to the motorcycles. I have a log page for every bike I have. Now we're coming up on 32,000 miles on this motorcycle and of course it's, uh, it's been under my care since day one and I've done the maintenance, I've tried to keep everything as uh, clean, neat, orderly as possible, even the chain maintenance and I'm trying to get this ready for the next ride. I think it'll be a lot of fun 
scoping out to see if we've got any anything that I like as an improvement. If I've gone too far, I can go halfway back. But again, it's a very non-committal thing. And that's the good part of it. If you don't like it, it's not like cutting your seat in half with a chainsaw or something else. This is a just an hour later, it can be right back the way it was if you don't like it. But for me, and again, it's my riding style, where I ride, how I ride, who I ride with. That, that quick turning ability works for me. <laughs> Maybe for some people, it'd be exactly what they don't want. But it's a free thing to try. It's like trying something. You don't have to get married to it right away. So I hope I've not left out any steps on this video that it's, it's kind of an easy thing to do. And we try to post something up on our channel every day. Something useful, something productive, something you can enjoy and without any uh, any bad feelings or any <laughs> drilling a hole in a gas tank to see if that works. I don't know. It's These non-committal things, I really like them because there's a lot of times I do it and I put it right back. But but the fork lowering, I've done one, two, I've done four bikes and th this is the fourth one and I found an improvement on all four of them. The lowering links, I've got one, two, I've got three with lowering links, two with lowering links. And I don't know, you know, I I like the bike being a little bit lower. If you're a big tall guy, you probably don't. But for for me and in my unique thing, and I know Luciano and Chris and the gal with the BMW from Perry's, they all fell in love with those lowering links. So lower in the front, lower in the back. You've got a lot of choices and none of them are big dollars or big commitment. So again, on our channel, we do try to share useful motorcycle-related information, maybe even some tips on, who knows, on growing tomatoes, I don't know. But if you enjoy it, share it with your friends, subscribe, whatever you got to do, and oh, send me your paycheck, that would be good. But a lot of the things that we do on, in motorcycling, if we share the information, we both win. Because basically by sharing this information, really didn't cost me a penny. If it saves you or makes your enjoyment better, even better. You can't lose. It's a win-win. Anyway, hope you did enjoy the video, and thanks so much for watching. So the purpose of our channel is we try to share and, and share honestly and truthfully information, most of it regarding mo old motorcycles or modifying motorcycles. Much information deals with paint, restoration, painting wheels, custom features, carbon fiber, polishing. It's all out on the channel. I believe right now we're coming up on 2,400 videos. Uh, we post something almost every day, so it's hard to keep track of it. But we do try to share the information. <laughs>